it, if any of you are from Wyoming, I'm sorry. <laughs> Colorado, very nice, Wyoming. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit today about uh, images. I want to talk to you a little bit about perception. Um, speaking of places I've been, this is a photograph of one of my favorite places uh, on Earth. This is the Point Reyes seashore in Northern California, uh, up in Marin County. And it's a gorgeous you know, place to be. And this is a photograph, uh, I, although I, I wouldn't say obviously because of the subject matter of my talk, but it, uh, I'll go ahead, it is a, it is a photograph. And um, it's a photograph, and, and photographs capture light. That's the, the, the trick of the photograph. It, a, a photograph actually is a capturing of whatever physical light information is going on uh, at, at that moment. And it's capturing it from a particular point of view. Uh, and it, it contrasts that a little bit, though, with this. This is a painting of the same area. And it, the, the funny thing about this, of course, is that statistically, this looks nothing like the other thing. The colors are completely different. The, um, even the, the shapes and things that you actually see are, are entirely different. And paintings, in general, uh, depict the effects of light. That's the trick with a painting, uh, uh, or, or illustrations in general, is that they tend to depict light's impact on the world. They don't capture it, but they depict it. So, in 1983, I'm roughly, uh, uh, like many of you here, I'm, I'm an undergraduate, and I see this image in one of my classes, and this is a computer graphics image, and it's by relative standards an ancient computer graphics image because it's from 1983. And it was done by uh, this group some of you have heard of called Lucasfilm. Um, and it's a group that eventually turned into Pixar. And I saw this image, and the, the trick with computer graphics images, on the other hand, so it's not that they, they don't capture any light because there's no light to capture. Um, they don't depict the effects of light on things because they don't actually have the things to depict the, the um, effects of light on. And, and what they tend to do, uh, there is some depiction, but there's also a lot of simulation of the effects of light. And so we've got these three things here. We've got, and, they, and they're all different. The first one, basically capturing light, right? This one is depicting the effects of light, and this is an attempt to simulate some of the effects of light. Uh, by the way, I'm, this is my clicker. I'm not uh, getting text messages and while we're, just in case you're worried. I, I am live tweeting while we're going. <laughs> it's a new thing. But the thing that's interesting about this is these are all the same place. And it depicts the same place, and the phenomenology is the same. And, and of course, there might you know, be different emotional reactions to some of these, what have you, but, but they're all the same place. And, and this really fascinated me um, back when I was in architecture school, because that was kind of what our goal was. Uh, our goal was to create a sense of place, you know, giving people an understanding of what the environment was, what their surroundings were. And this is kind of how this title got, uh, uh, the title of my talk got put together. You can see, you know, down here at the low end, I started architecture school, and then I started it again, and uh, this is basically the world's most ADD course of, of uh, uh, research and study, and I, I encourage you uh, all to, to follow this. <laughs> so what happened is one afternoon, I'm, I'm sitting in a very large architecture class, and some gentlemen from uh, a, a very, very big uh, uh, and famous architecture firm in Chicago, Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, uh, ironically, were, came to present some of the work that they had been doing. And now remember, this is 1982, 1983. Um, uh, the internet didn't exist. A lot of things didn't exist. Um, cars had just been invented, and dinosaurs were recently. <laughs> And they showed this, you know, and I'm sitting in a, a class about this size, uh, and they decided to show this, and I almost physically lost control of every sense in my body. Uh, I, 
I was so excited. I thought, this is the coolest thing I have ever seen. And so I made, right at that moment, it's like almost rushing the stage. How do I, I want to do this? How do I do this? And I ended up uh, switching to the computer graphics research group. Ohio State had a very, uh, and still does, had a very uh, large computer graphics research community. It was one of the hotbeds of research at the time. And uh, so, you know, and I said, I, this, I would, this is what I want to do. And... <laughs> They understood. <laughs> so another thing that happened around the same time, of course, being any respectable, uh, you know, edgy student of the 80s, I listened to a lot of Frank Zappa, and this album cover shows up one afternoon uh, in my collection of, uh, uh, of records, and I noticed this painter, and this, this painter is uh, Donald Roller Wilson, and Donald Roller Wilson's big thing, uh, and especially at that time, he was a photorealistic painter. And the idea is this is not a photograph, this is just a, this is a painting. This is a depiction, eh, not a capturing, not a simulation, not a direct physical simulation. This is a depiction of light in this room, and it's a fucking amazing depiction. <laughs> Look at that, right? This is, you know, some of you, although not legally able to drink, but you know the brand name of the beer based on some, I mean, it's pretty impressive, right, what we've got happening here. So again, this looks like a photo, and, you know, and it, and it has this beautiful sense of reality about it, and it turns out that one of the things I started to notice that there were a lot of, and, and those of you who are painters, you know, you, you know this already, but there are a lot of tricks a lot of clever little hacks that you use in order to depict things. To depict glass, we cleverly deploy some white stuff so we get these nice specular highlights off of the, off of the glass. You still have to be very, very skilled to do this. This isn't just, just whap some you know, white paint up there. <laughs> but I started to become very impressed with these tricks and what have you. Right? Look at, you know, it's crazy. About the same time, Computer graphics people were experimenting with exact physical simulations of physical optics. This, is a, a, this is, was done by Turner Witted, who's at University of North Carolina. Uh, I think this is 79 or 80. And this is basically a physical simulation of the rays of light as they travel through the world and intersect with objects. This is very primitive. But it's actually, at that time, it was amazing, because here was a physical simulation of the real world. So I abandoned architecture altogether, right, because this just seemed like much too cool of a thing. And I started studying this particular line of stuff. Now, a, an interesting little side note is, while I was at this computer graphics research group, I hooked up with a bunch of uh, neuroscientists. And these neuroscientists were very interested in electroencephalography, uh, so basically the electrical patterns of your brain. This is a very early functional image, so this predates functional magnetic resonance imaging uh, by easily 15 years, almost 20, uh, of electrical activities on the surface of a brain. Now, it's done using the primitive stuff that we had at the time, best we could do, but it was actually pretty important. So some guys at Pixar, who was Pixar was just getting into the business of computer graphics writ large, uh, noticed this, and they asked me to come to work with them. And uh, I'm this guy right here. I had to explain who I was to, uh, earlier. <laughs> Not the guy with the beard. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't grow a beard if you paid me. I, it just won't work. It doesn't happen. So this is the original, so I, I did a little bit of medical imaging work, but I ended up in the animation group. And this is the original Pixar animation group, if you really can believe it. And there's actually an intern and a guy we borrowed from another department in that picture. <laughs> so the, the animation group at that time was almost countable, well, it was certainly countable on two hands, almost countable on one hand. And 
right now, by the way, Pixar has about 1,100, 1,200 employees, just to give you an idea of scale. So we worked on films while I was there, and yet again, I caught us doing these things. Like, notice that what we've got right there is, again, a cheat or a little simulation of a window pane on the side of the toy's head. That's pretty, you know, it, it's subtle, it's, but it's not a physical simulation. It's just a depiction, again. And it gives us a great idea about the roundness and the metallicness of that uh, shape that you see there. We were depicting this stuff so that it looked right. Not that it was physically correct. And as a matter of fact, we got accused a lot of making things that were physically correct. But in fact, uh, or if I uh, asked me with an Oscar. Um, <laughs> It was a real Oscar, too. It wasn't a physical, you weren't hacking. <laughs> we won an Oscar for that film. Um, but again, it, again, almost everything was cheating, uh, and not, not, not so much cheating, but at least hackery and trickery and skullduggery. And, th and this stuff continued to become interesting to me. We made this film, and nothing in this film is physically correct. Uh, this film is all about depiction. It's not simulation, it's the, we're trying to act like painters here again. So, and, uh, and, and with this also, the same kind of thing here. There, there are little bits about this that are physically correct, but nothing that's actually, you know, real honest-to-God physics. I animated the pins flying around after watching a bowler, uh, uh, it turns out a left-handed bowler, who knew? Uh, and, and it turns out that this is a strike that a left-handed bowler threw in a tournament that I managed to animate. Is it physically correct? No, it's, but it's a really nice depiction of light. So about this time, Pixar's going through its change to where Pixar's now going to start working on a motion picture. I start to have a little crisis of faith. I go back to architecture school, of course. Um, and while I'm... <laughs> why not? Uh, I didn't finish it. I figured I'm going to finish it this time. And while I'm there, um, this comes up. And <laughs> this is Picasso, so we're, we're high class here right now. <laughs> but I was having a meeting with my advisor about that Chicago thing that we had just seen and about how the fact that even though there, were no photo, there was no photorealism in that thing at all, those were lines. Those were all just simple lines with boxes, and we flew around boxes. And that gave us a, 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 the, the effect that we were after. It, we saw things in 3D. We saw shape. You see Chicago. You recognize buildings. And this came to mind. And this, this hung above the toilet in my home for my whole childhood. So I got to see it a lot. <laughs> That's four lines. And that's four simple lines that not only tell you what that is, because we very properly did this, but we know the gender of, the, of what this is as well. There's nothing in this that tells us anything about light at all. This is just edges of things. There's no light here at all. So I realized that I had been going about this all wrong, um, and I started to talk to people over, it turns out that my, my advisor was also a psychologist who knew about cognitive psychology, hooked me up with somebody over in the psych department, and I left architecture again to study this problem. And so, again, on the right, on the, on the left, you've got some Henry Moore, on the right, you've got a line drawing of the same thing. Again, no light here at all, just simple edges, just simple information. So I started to study shape. And shape, instead of trying to study images, tried to study the things that give rise to images. So in this case, shape. And these are some shapes from our 3D printer. And one of the things that we discovered along the way of this was that not only is shape a visual phenomenon, but shape is also a tactile or haptic phenomenon as well. And we've learned a little bit it, it, over the past years about how vision and touch interact in our understanding of shape. 
And it turns out that this edges and, and lines thing that, that I, that I kind of wandered into, turns out it's a much more fruitful direction to help us understand. Which brings us to this. This is The Veiled Virgin by Giovanni Strazza. Not, people don't know much about Giovanni Strazza. But Giovanni Strazza, is, this is a late 1800s, and this is marble. This is rock. This beautifully soft thing is made out of rock. It sits in a a convent in Nova Scotia, carefully guarded by the nuns. <laughs> I have sent them a letter to ask if I may come see it. Let you know. <laughs> but this thing is masterful. The question is, how can something so soft be made out of something so hard, yet we perceive it as this beautifully soft thing all of a sudden? How does our brain make the separation between the soft veil and the slightly more firm face, but then from that, it, it comes from rock? How do we do that? Well, so I have some ideas. <laughs> haven't figured it out yet, but I'm going to. And I hope that, uh, even if you never finish architecture school, uh, that from now on, when you see images in the world, and you see shapes and objects in the world, you'll look at them a little bit differently. Thank you.